In this video, we are going to look at rates of reaction and what affects the rates of reactions. Let us first look at collision theory and how atoms are affected by changes in temperature and by a catalyst. In any gas or liquid, the particles are in total random motion in all directions with a huge range of kinetic energies. At room temperature, there are millions of collisions happening in very small spaces. How often they happen depends on the temperature and how closely they are spaced. Remember that particles are being bounced off one another and the container they are in. The average kinetic energy is reflected on a macroscopic scale as temperature in Kelvin, but not all particles are moving at the average speed. The distribution of kinetic energy of the particles is shown in this graph called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. The probability of particles having a particular energy is on the y-axis. The average velocity or kinetic energy is usually shown on the x-axis. There is virtually no chance of particles having a kinetic energy of zero because all particles are moving and bumping into one another. There is still a tiny chance of a small fraction of the particles having far below or far above the kinetic energy average near the highest point. An understanding of the statistical nature and shape of the Maxwell-Boltzmann particle kinetic energy distribution graph is crucial to a higher level understanding of the effects of temperature change and a catalyst on the speed of a chemical reaction. It's worth noting that not all chemical collisions result in an activated complex. Very few of the particles meet the required energy among other requirements. Anything which alters this fact will change the rate of reactions. Some reactions will happen quickly, like an explosion. Some slowly, like the rusting of iron. To better explain why, we use something called collision theory. Collision theory suggests that a reaction will only take place if three conditions are met. The three conditions are 1. The reactants must collide. Two. The collision occurs with a certain minimum energy known as the activation energy or Ea. 3. The collision has the correct collision geometry. So let's compare two collisions. Reaction A and B have reacting particles which have a collision taking place, enough energy. But in the example here, the reacting molecules in reaction A approaching one another collide with incorrect collision geometry. They aren't facing the right way and as a result, no reaction is taking place. Contrasting this, with reaction B, where the collision geometry is correct and the result is a reaction between the species. Explaining the effect of temperature. Temperature has a big effect on the rate of reactions. As the temperature is raised, the particles gain energy and move around more quickly. 
This means that there will be more chance of reactant particles colliding. There will be more collisions between particles in any given time, and more frequent collisions result in an increased rate of reaction. The increased energy of the particles mean that a greater proportion of collisions in the reacting mixture actually produce a reaction. More collisions happen with enough energy to exceed the activation energy of the reaction. Remember that the activation energy of a reaction is the minimum amount of energy needed before a reaction can take place. So, as we increase the temperature, we increase the rate of reaction. The main reason for this is that a higher proportion of the collisions at the higher temperature will have sufficient energy to result in a reaction. In other words, more particles collide with energy greater than the activation energy for the reaction. In addition, as we increase the temperature, the particles gain more energy and move around faster. This increases the chance of collisions between reactant particles, producing more frequent collisions. A catalyst speeds up a reaction, but it must be involved chemically however temporarily in some way and is continually changed and reformed as the reaction proceeds. Catalysts work by providing an alternative reaction pathway in order to lower the activation energy. For example, it can help in the endothermic bond breaking processes. If you consider the kinetic energy distribution curved at a fixed temperature, the green area shows the molecules which have sufficient kinetic energy to react and overcome the activation energy, Ea1, for the uncatalyzed reaction. In the presence of a catalyst, the lower activation energy, Ea2, allows a much greater proportion of the molecules to have enough energy to react at the same temperature. This is shown by the combined green area plus the purple area, and this increased fraction of molecules considerably increases the chance of a successful collision leading to product formation, so speeding up the rate of reaction. The collision theory relates molecule collisions to reaction rate. According to this theory, reacting molecules must collide with sufficient energy if they are to form products. But what about pressure, concentration and surface area? These also affect the rate of reactions. But how do we explain those in terms of collision theory? Concentration. An increase in concentration means there are more particles. More particles means that there will be more collisions in the same volume of reaction. This should increase the reaction rate. This is illustrated by the red and green molecules. If there are a few particles, there are fewer collisions in comparison with more molecules and therefore more collisions. In a typical question, we might be asked to identify which of the two graphs reflects a reaction that happened at a higher initial concentration. The blue graph shows a higher concentration reaction because more particles would cause more collisions. So a high rate reaction compared with the red graph where there are fewer particles and fewer collisions. Therefore a lower rate of reaction. Now, 
pressure for gases is treated exactly the same. It has the same effect on the spacing between particles. What about solids? When one of the reactants is a solid, the reaction can only take place at the surface of the solid. Breaking the solid into smaller pieces will increase the surface area exposed to the other reactant. This should increase the reaction rate. In the diagram, there are blue and red particles. If the blue particle is one solid, like a granule, it has a small surface area. The red particle, a possible acid, has fewer areas that touch the blue particles, therefore a slow reaction rate. In the example on the right, the blue particles are made smaller by breaking up the solid, thereby increasing the surface area. So there is more area in contact with the red particles, and thereby increasing the rate of reaction. An increased surface area would have a similar effect to high concentrations and pressure. We would show this graphically by a steeper gradient. The blue graph shows a faster reaction caused by a larger surface area. It's possible that the solid was crushed or powdered. This means that more particles touch regularly. More collisions in the same time leads to a higher rate of reaction compared with the red graph. This is where there are fewer particles and fewer collisions, therefore a lower rate of reaction.